What is up, and it's going to guys, Simpsy here, and welcome back to another episode of my FIFA 14 Manchester United Career Mode Season 5, guys. As a matter of fact, in today's episode, we have two matches, and the first match is against Liverpool, the second match is against Manchester City. And funnily enough, guys, which actually, quite frankly, surprises me, we have the January transfer window. Uh, luckily, you guys, I asked for suggestions in the last couple of episodes, um... Maybe this career mode is coming along a lot quicker than what I thought. Um, I did say five or six episodes per season in this in the last two because obviously I only play teams in the top five and whatnot. But um, we're coming up to January try quite soon, and um, I'm hoping uh, I sign some players uh, what you like and uh, suggestion. Cristiano and out of there, fucking bringing just bringing an absolute immense presence to the Manchester United squad, and that is just an outstanding goal to break the deadlock. Look at that. The way he hits that ball is just incredible, and it looks so cool on the replays. He hits it so well. It curves past the Liverpool goalkeeper, and it's just absolutely crazy. And there's a train going past my house, so I have to stop his amazing performance uh, to, I don't know, stop you guys hearing the fucking train. God damn it. Oh, he's having a toot. I do apologize about that, guys. Um, mind you, it is 20 past 5 in the morning. And that's when the time trains really go past. I just feel like, I always feel, and uh, I always record videos at night. I feel less interruptions, less noise. And I always like doing videos at night. It just feels better, I guess. Now, <laughs> talking about the train. Now, I know some of you have watched my previous videos uh, and the train's gone past. It's just so fucking annoying. And there's, there's always two types of train drivers. There's a cool drive train driver and a cunt train driver. I live kind of in, um, what's the word, suburbia, I live in a uh, uh, residential area, and a train, go, a train goes through there. Now, some guys at 5 o'clock in the morning, some of the train guys go, Doop, like that guy did a little bit of a toot, but some of them, there's this one fucking cunt at like 20 past 5 in the morning, goes, and does it for like at least a kilometre, just wakes up everyone, just, just to be a just quite frankly, to be a dick, because he can. Obviously, because I've lived here for, Jesus, how long have I lived here? Probably, I don't even know. More than 15 years, probably. And I'm just used to it. I, I don't know, I sleep straight past it. But it's not really a big thing. It's only when you're recording videos at bloody 20 past 5 in the morning. Uh, it comes a problem. But um, let's talk about the gameplay now. We're having an absolute rout against Liverpool. And Eden Hazard there scoring an amazing goal. Uh, it's just... I, I didn't actually, this could quite possibly be the highest scoring game I have ever done. Uh, Liver, I ended up beating Cardiff City 8-0. I'm um, hoping, I was going ham in this game. I don't know what was up with the Liverpool goalkeeper. Liverpool aren't usually this bad. It was To be honest, it was the goalkeeper's fault. He started letting in goals left, right and centre. And I really wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I was talking about the fucking train. <laughs> but Gareth Bale there scoring with his, like, Gareth Bale's running through on goal and scoring with his right foot, which is... Quite weird, to be honest. But everyone ended up getting on the score sheet. Gareth, Bar Gareth Bale scoring two. Eden Hazard scoring one. Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo scoring one. Lucas and Mario Balotelli ended up scoring one as well. Neymar got man of the match with four assists. Oh, what what an awesome player. And uh, he, he's really like an assisting striker these days. Since we signed Mario Balotelli a few seasons ago, he's been just feeding. Uh, like it goes to Bale and then it's either Neymar. But mind you, I, I kind of I feel hypocritical because I remember uh, in the first episode of Season 5, he was putting those tramp goals away from Mario Balotelli. Hmm, that's interesting. But guys, Mario Balotelli is the leading goal scorer on 12 goals, followed by Lamella on 11, Podolski on 12. Nine, I don't know why I said Podolski, so weird. Podolski on nine goals. But we do have a home match against Manchester City, the Manchester you know, uh, the Manchester Derby, which uh, is always very, very interesting. And we really do need to pull points uh, at Manchester City, or well, against Manchester City, seeing as we drew against Chelsea, who are they having an average sort of season. But guys, we actually do have the, Jan uh, the January transfer window coming up here, the transfer deadline day, matter of fact, which... Uh, Oh, excuse me, did surprise me. Uh, but we're currently leading on 14 wins, 1 draw, and 0 losses. We're going to a good staff. Hopefully we can go undefeated. I don't know if, I even, I don't know if I've gone undefeated in a match a season ever, to be a matter of fact. But guys, above all, make sure to leave a like and a comment saying, would you like to see Season 6 of the Manchester United Career Mode? I have gone through it. I feel like Season 5 is a good way to end it if we win the title and the Champions League. That'll be our, five, our fifth consecutive 
obviously title and Barclays Premier League. <laughs> um, even our Capital One Cup and Copper Euro. <laughs> oh, maybe not the Copper Euro, because I think that's when you win the Champions League. Yeah, my bad. Um, anyway, would you like to see that? Let me know. Uh, if I'm not going to do a Manchester United crew mode, I'm probably going to play as Southampton, Crystal Palace, Norwich, um, whole city, Cardiff, maybe. Put in the comment section down below. Let me know. Uh, let me know. Or I could do a season two of my Fiorentina career mode. But guys, I've started to do this a lot more now, and I started to do this at the start of last season. Uh, every time I get a penalty, I push Begovic up. It's basically just a test if his penalty stats will go up. The more penalties I score with him, I, I probably only get like two or three penalty chances a season, and I know that he's not the best. Uh, obviously, penalty kick taker. But if he scores, I'll be interested to see if he goes up because I I, I believe he should. But um, Begovic to bring up the goal scoring there, and that was a pretty outstanding shot by Mario Goetze. I, I don't know how he got that much dip from that like shorter range, but Mario Balotelli um, scores a goal for a striker. <laughs> scores the first goal for the strikers, and uh, it was a good it was a good pass to cut back inside whoever that was. Awesome, awesome stuff. I think it was Ronaldo. A matter of fact, yeah, it was. But it was a good pass from piece of play. Sends Mario Balotelli through on goal. And Joe Hart had no chance. Gareth Bale running down the wing. He manages to find... Bale. <laughs> that just annoyed me. How frustrating that looked. But this is an amazing goal here from Cristiano Ronaldo. Showing his nice little piece of skills. Doing like a, a roulette sort of thing. And cuts back inside. I'm going to show you the replay on this sexy beast. But I don't know if we'll show you like the skill bit. But uh, I'm sure you guys can go watch and just that last little, just, it just looks so cool. And uh, it was a nice little change instead of him just running down that left-hand side, cutting back in. Now there it is, nice little scoop turn as well. And uh, just absolutely outplays the Manchester City defense, scoring another goal from United. And uh, he's going to have an absolute mental season. I did say Mario Balotelli is probably going to win player of the season. Uh, but for me, I, I, I feel really good. Ronaldo's back. He's playing for Manchester United. And he's scoring goals above all. But we end up winning 3-0 over Manchester City, which is always good. And Cristiano Ronaldo ended up getting man of the match. Uh, goal assists, Eden Hazard, Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, just, I don't know why I have to say that. Ronaldo. We dominated Manchester City. And uh, they had very little shots on goal. If, in fact, any. <laughs> but, guys, we had a youth player that wants out. Now, I haven't really focused on the youth academy. I've explained this in the last season. Simply because you spend $10 million on the best scouts and... You get the players, and not all of them are great, to be quite frank. Uh, and really, when, you, when you're when like, you using a youth academy, you, you need to be in a lower league team. You need to give them first team um, action every single... They need to play every single match. And you need to praise them. And it doesn't really fit well when you're playing as Manchester United and you have a unlimited amount of money. If you if you need money, you can just sell a player. Um, but I'm, also, I'm like, I can go out and buy these players that have already been scouted and have a potential. So... I do have a lot of Finnish, Russian, and Swedish players, and uh, I do put them up for loans. It's just they don't seem to go on loan. Uh, now, Lajic. <sighs> I did sign this. I did sign this play in the. Was it, it must be in the first or second season. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. But I did sign him from Roma, and I did a swap, a play plus cash deal with Nanny. Now I did bring him to the club. Uh, he didn't. He, he performed well, but just it's, the further I went on, the more money I got, and the more the this holy and solely the better players I got. And he didn't go up and he didn't go up and overall. It was just a better choice to bring in uh, newer players. So, Lyich wouldn't be surprised if he leaves uh, anytime soon. But I did send Adnan Janazai on a loan to the Black Cats, Sunderland, and we did get an offer for Turan, the Turkish, uh, the Turkish. Center, the midfielder who used to play for Atletico Madrid, and I wholly and solely bought him for making a profit. So I don't really see why you don't try to get as many pre-contracts as possible. <laughs> I tried to do it, and uh, I actually made, I think it was $9 million I sold him for. I got allocated $7 million. But I'm getting off topic of what has just happened on screen. Now, this Serbian, uh, what's his name? Hang on. I just want to get the right pronunciation. I just can't see the screen because of the fucking Sony Vegas. I think it's... I, I want to say it right. I'm bringing off a rain. I'm going to make him my first team uh, centre-back because I did need an upgrade for my centre-back. It's Mark Isimovic. Mars, Mark Simovic. Uh, I just wanted to get that pronunciation right. 
But um, he is an 89 overall now. I was scouting this guy for quite some time. Uh, last season, I think it was last season when he signed from. I, I can't, it's it's a mesh between season three and four. And what, <laughs> it was either last season or season before. Now I was looking for this guy from Roma, and uh, he it was like the best centre back in the world. But unfortunately, we we just missed out on a 69, I think it was 62 million offer from. Uh, Manchester City. So we signed for them, but we managed to get the signing from him. Uh, we had a couple of more pre-contracts, and this is getting ridiculous, guys. We end up signing Rodriguez from AS Monaco, and we quite possibly could be signing Juan Mata and uh, Sergio Aguero on pre-contract. So if we get them, in the, if we could bring them into the squad, that's a kind of like another thing I'd like to uh, show you guys, but uh, in the next season, if we do so, if we decide to do so. I ended up selling Frimpong, and if you guys can actually remember, I actually bought Frimpong on a free contract quite a while ago. So we did make our profit back up on him. So the first player we're going to sign, I was like, who would I rather play with, Sergio Aguero or Mata? And I made the decision for Sergio Aguero. He's 29 years of age, and he's an 87 overall. Probably won't give him much first team action, but it'll be kind of cool to sign him. We could either make a profit on him. Or he'd be a good squad rotational player. Because I haven't really got that many strikers, as per se. Obviously, Ronaldo and Muller and Eden Hazard can play in that striker role. But whether or not they're actually a, a, a set striker is um, obviously not true. But we did sign our centre-back, which I'm happy to see. $49 million for the best centre-back in the world. And him and Samura up front are going to be awesome. But surprisingly, we got a loan offer from Eden Hazard to go to Everton. I was like... Okay, you can definitely go to Everton. Um, if you're going to play at Everton, you're going to score goals. That that'd be awesome. Um, still going to make my money back on him. Probably wouldn't get. He probably get more game time at Everton than he would with me. And that just gives me more of an opportunity to play Oscar and Lucas and whatnot. Now talking about loans, it just dawned on me. We did get an offer from Muller to go to Bayern Munich. Uh, I did think about that very hard and long, whether or not to send him back there just for. Uh, just for, obviously, playtime. But Bayern Munich are uh, Champions League contenders with me. And I don't feel it would have been a wise idea to do that and send them to a rival club. I don't mind sending Eden Hazard to, like, Everton, a lower league team who's not fighting for the Champions League and not even fighting for the title. Uh, I don't really mind doing that. It actually happened in my Bayern Munich career mode. Um, I, I ended up loaning Tony Cruz to West Brom, which I found was fucking perfect. He went ham, went up in boost, and he came back an absolute awesome player. Papadopoulos, the Greek international who plays for Marseille, actually signed to Liverpool. And uh, Bayern Leverkusen actually made a hell of a signing there. Um, Bat Schreiler. I, I butchered that. I'm so, so apologize uh, to you Bayern Leverkusen fans. He went to Schalke, so that's kind of a rival transfer. Wilfred Zaha has a loan for Wigan Athletic. Now, I... Did take into consideration, you, know, you guys told me to play more Zaha and Janazai because they're a higher potential, they're the higher rated now, and they probably can fit into that first team squad. Eh, unfortunately, they didn't. Uh, Fred, he used to play for F FC Shakhtar, signed for Paris Saint Germain, but it was my centre back, my Serbian centre back, to be the highest transfer uh, of the. Of the window, and now we have a perfect squad. Uh, Varane was kind of that weakness; he hasn't gone up in stats, but uh, uh, we've thoroughly replaced him now. So probably going to pop him up on loan, and that probably frees up for selling Jones, which is kind of unfortunate. But guys, it's time to end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. If you watched the way through, I really do appreciate it. If you left a like or a comment, I can't thank you guys enough for that. And it's time to end it here. Sorry about the train, and you go out and have a fantastic rest of your day, guys. Goodbye. Ah, oh, fucking trains.